Jabari Simpson. I'm a senior English major here in Winston Salem State, and I'm also an intern with Bell Mr. Slade's company, No More Suits LLC. Now, uh, we're, we're here today to recognize the 400 years of slavery that occurred in the, this, diaspora, this diaspora of America. There's a wealth of hidden history and information regarding the misconceptions that occurred during this time period, specifically in Winston Salem. Many are aware of the, that the District of Salem was emancipated their slaves in 1836, well before the Emancipation Proclamation. These slaves were natives of Africa and brought to the U.S. Uh, some of the former slaves were located <coughs> back home, but many stayed here in Salem. Now, the purpose of this uh, event was to educate the audience on the history of Liberia and the origins, and the origins of the city of Winston-Salem and the Africans who settled there in the mid-1800s. It's important to understand our African heritage. Uh, this panel discussion will give the audience a wealth of knowledge and information about the historical events that occurred adjacent to this university. Now, uh, just to introduce a couple of what to introduce our panelists today. Our first is Ms. Cheryl Harry. Uh, Cheryl Harry is a cultural curator whose mission is engaging the community and the preservation of celebration of black heritage. Ms. Harry is a well-known author and is the well-known author of African American Legacy of Winston Salem, where she develops educational outreach programs to find out among people of all backgrounds and ethnicities. She's employed with the Old Salem Museum and Gardens, where she serves as the Director of African American Programming and currently serves as the Human Resource Manager. It has been her aim to foster and cultivate a love for African American culture, in which is uh, preservation and perpetuity. Per 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 <laughs> it's very much. To that end, she founded the Triad Cultural Arts Center, uh, which uh, which presents various programs and initiatives geared towards the promotion of African American history, art, and culture. The organization hopes to try at Juneteenth Festival Annually and uh, focuses on enrichment for youth and exposure of local artists at the heart of the Triad's cultural arts. Sh uh, Cheryl also works to ensure that their voices are heard. Up next, we have James Hunt. In 1998, James Wilder Sr. co founded the Liberian organization of People, also known as the LLP. The purpose of doing this was to promote education, culture, and uh, international relations, seeking collaborative opportunities to help expedite human capacity building. In post-war, in post-war, and the global pandemic nation of Liberia, under its visionary leadership, educational initiatives began between the institution of higher learning and Fort Sam Technical Community College, also known as FTCC. In the, as a result of his passionate appeal to FTCC, well, then, then President uh, Dr. Gary M. Green, an initial memorandum of understanding was signed between Grand Basel Community College and FTCC for curriculum development. Uh, sub subsequently, in December 2018, prior to Dr. Green's retirement as president of FTCC, a, mem uh, a memor memorandum of understanding was signed awarding five in-state tuition scholarships to uh, the LOP every year to expect human capacity building in Liberia. Therefore, in appreciation of his visionary leadership, the energy and resource resourcefulness and the passion which he has served, coupled with his tireless and selfless efforts to make possible the awarding of these scholarships, the entire members of the LOP during a regularly scheduled meeting voted unanimously to name Mr. Hunter, to name Mr. Uh, to, to, to name the scholarship in honor of Mr. Hunter. Our next uh, guest is Mr. Ralph A. Kirsten Sr. He's a native of Liberia, but resides in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Mr. Pearson holds a master's degree in education uh, from Grand Canyon from Grand Canyon University and a bachelor's of science degree in economics from Winston Salem State University. Mr. Pearson has been employed in Winston Salem Fourth Thomas County School System for more than 22 years, and he's a founding member of the LOP. Mr. Pearson currently is the vice the vice chairman of the Liberian organization Piedmont Board of Directors, and is also the founding <coughs> founder and chair of the board of directors from the Black Coast Student Education Association. The association is a 501c3 nonprofit entity with the purpose of helping to educate some of the underprivileged children in the Black Coast community of Arlington, Liberia, where his late mother grew up. He travels to Liberia uh, every summer, he's traveled to Liberia every summer since 1991, and is married as a proud father of three. Our last time was Blessing Tambor. Blessing Tambor is a military police officer with over five plus years in public safety and his IT field. His family came to America when he was just eight years old and has lived in North Carolina for 15 plus years. He currently holds a, cert a certification as a police officer, firefighter, and military public. He's graduated with a bachelor's of science degree in criminal justice and a minor in computer science from Shaw University 
and is currently a first lieutenant in the U.S. Army 107th MP unit, found in Raleigh, North Carolina, and owns a non government organization. Now, I'm um, going to turn it over to our moderator for the evening, Ms. Pearl Hill. Yay. Hello, Winston Salem. How are you guys doing today? Good. Hey. Awesome. I am so glad that you guys uh, took the opportunity to come here and learn about Liberia's history um, with Winston Salem. So, thank you guys so much. Um, it is truly an honor to be here today to be able to moderate this event. Um, and I'm just so excited for everything that's going to happen today. Um, so, first things first, we're going to just jump right into the panel um, and really get to the beginning of the history of Liberia. Um, so, from research, we discovered that Happy Hill, which is an African American community in Winston Salem, was once called Liberia. Um, why did that name change? The, um, the records, we don't know why the name actually changed. All we know is that um, about two years after um, the community was founded, 1872, is showing up on maps instead of Liberia, it shows up as Happy Hill. So we don't know who changed the name, who made that decision. And there's just no, there's no record of it that we found. Um, so just kind of like diving into it, I think something that a lot of people don't understand is like the history of Liberians in America. Um, so let's just talk about like slavery. Um, before the Liberians, before the African American slaves went back, um, let's just talk about slavery in America. Like what? What was life like for Liberians before they went back to Africa to recolonize? Um, of course, the Moravians kept great records. So, um, in terms of uh, ethnicity or where um, people are actually from, there's documentation on um, uh, the Mandingo tribe. Um, we know that Sam, who was enslaved here, was uh, from there. Um, we have some records indicating that other people were from Guinea, um, West Africa, but not Liberia per se. But we know that, um, of course, most of the people were from um, West Africa. Um, I think the story with Timothy is quite interesting. We know that he was West African, um, that he, the records indicate he was from Guinea. And um, he never spoke um, German or English. Um, he worked at the, at the, at the paper mill. Um, we believe that that may have been a form of retaliation. Um, he, never, never, he never spoke outside of his native tongue. Um, I always talk about, when I'm talking about how slavery was in Winston, I usually refer to it before the fall and after the fall. Yeah. Um, so what was the fall? <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when the Moravians, uh, of course, first settled here, they believed that once uh, a person joined the church, an enslaved person joined the church, that they were spiritual equals, which means that they would worship together, uh, but they still believed that everybody had their own station in life, you know, you were enslaved up to your particular station, but once you accepted Christ, you became brothers and sisters of Christ. So you would have uh, black and white Moravians worshiping together. Uh, one particular family, the first family that joined the Moravian church, the Moravians were really interested in ensuring that this was sort of a model family, because as you know, the practice of um, black and white worshiping enslaved uh, and enslaved or worshiping together was not um, a normal practice. Uh, so, um, Johann Samuel's family um, was taught classical music. The children played uh, music. They also received an education. So, um, after a while, as um, they, as Moravians are in America, 
they accept the customs and practices. They become Southerners. And um, the children are growing up. So they're uh, sort of learning things. So they accept, they believe that blacks and whites should no longer worship together. Enslaved and enslaver should no longer worship together. So the worship services are, are separate. Wow, wow. I'm sure they received like so much pushback during that time. Um, I can't imagine like going through to a church during that kind of turmoil where you have slaves and them <coughs> worshiping together. Like that was really revolutionary for that time period. It was really crazy. Um, so um, Frederick Schumann is a name that um, comes up a lot. Um, why did he have to emancipate the slaves? Um. Uh, Dr. Schumann emancipated the slaves. He, he makes a decision to move back into Salem. Uh, what we know is Happy Hill today was outside of the town limits of Salem. Uh, and individuals could not own slaves. Uh, however, Dr. Schumann, when he came from Bethania, another Moravian community, had um, uh, enslaved people, so they had him live over in um, on the Salem farm. So he was ready to move back into Salem, and he could not bring enslaved people. So that's why he emancipated the people that he had enslaved. OK, thank you. And I just want to open it up a little bit more. Um, we do have some Liberians here on the panel. Um, and Mr. Pearson, and also Dr. Hunter, what does it mean to you guys to be a Liberian here in Winston-Salem State University? Was it intentional, or did you guys just you know, come across moving here. Why are you guys here and what does it mean to you guys? What do you to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want to thank the organizer for putting this together. I think it's very uh, meaningful and uh, something uh, very educational as well. And we hope uh, that uh, what we have to share today will be uh, informative and beneficial to others as well. Um, moving to Winston City, uh, naturally, people from different parts of the world, not just Liberian, people move to certain locations with certain purpose. You know? And uh, if you ask Mr. Pearson, he will tell you the reason why he moved here. And if you ask me personally, I will tell you the reason why I moved here. And so people have very reason, but mainly, it is essential to know that you don't want to move to a community that you don't have some connection. It's always the case, it's always very helpful to know someone where you're moving, you know, so that the, uh, uh, back home traditionally, people move to the town, you want to see the town chief. Mm -hmm. So in our case, individually, our town chief would be our individual family member or friend that will take you around, show you around, or tell you about the community before you even move there. You know, so it's, you know, that's, uh, that, that's the key. So moving to Winston Salem, and uh, when I came, actually, uh, Mr. Pearson, he was here much earlier before I came, and then I, in my case, I had a brother who lived here, who happened to be my town chief. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to Winston Salem, and uh, before I came, I had the opportunity to travel around you know, quite a bit, you know, uh, based, uh, due to my uh, former uh, uh, land of duty at home. And so I had the opportunity to travel to other parts. So I had a brother, my brother, he stayed there, yeah, and uh, he, said, he said to me, I was in New York, I remember, he said to me, look, I live in a small town, I know you're a world traveler, but uh, I live in a smaller town, you may want to come and check, it, check it out, you know. So, uh, those days, I remember it was the uh, people airline was in existence then. And then uh, he sent me uh, a round trip ticket. At that time, well, I believe it was $35 from New York. So, <laughs> so he said, come and see. He said, I'm sending you a round trip ticket. Just in case you don't like it, you go back. So as, as it happened, I came with that round trip ticket, and uh, as I didn't give him back his you know, other half. And I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So that's just to say that uh, how good the community has been to me. Yeah. So I believe other people move here for different reasons. And, uh, but it has to be that you have to have some connection, mm -hmm. some relationship with our community to make it much easier. Right. You know? right. 
And being that uh, Winston-Salem is historically connected to Liberia, do you feel just like more of a connection here than anywhere you've been in America? Like just knowing like the history that's backing and supporting Liberians here? Interestingly, when I first moved here, I didn't know a whole lot about the historic connection. Mm -hmm. I found that out later on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that just helped to kind of really solidify my, 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 my being here. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, we organized the Liberian Organization of the Pima in 1988, mm -hmm. and we started to make some research, some connection so with someone like uh, Sharon and other people. Mm -hmm. And so I started to really get into the history and to, and to find some of the uh, information that, uh, you know, they don't to find out that Liberia and winston Salem had a strong, long historic connection. And uh, not only just winston Salem, you'll be, uh, you'll be surprised to know that, Winston, that Liberia also had another, you know, connection in, uh, a part of North Carolina called Warrington. I don't know if you all know about that. Mm -hmm. But in Warrington, there's a community called Liberia as well. Oh, wow. So, uh, yes, Liberia does have a very uh, strong connection, a relationship with uh, the city of Mr. back dating back in the 1800s. Awesome. And what about you, Mr. Well, Pearson? Mr. Hunter, thank you. And mm -hmm. to all of you who have come, uh, thanks for coming. My story is similar to um, Mr. Hunter's story. I, I lived in the United States longer than I lived in Liberia. I came in and uh, was in New York with my sister, and I didn't like New York. Coming as a young boy, a young man, did not like New York, trust me. You know, there were fun was, but I still didn't like it. There was something about New York that didn't fit me. And every time we were in uh, Brooklyn, my sister and I, and her kids, she said, well, Rav, we're going to move to uh, Queens, New York. I said, okay, I was happy. Moved to Queens, New York the next day. So I don't like this place. She's like, where are you going to go? Well, I'm going to go back to Liberia. Because I just didn't like New York. Well, I had a, a cousin that lives here. And she was talking one day. She said to me, she said, Rav, come to North Carolina. And you might like it. Similar story. So I... Got on the same airline, picked my airline, and I told my sister, she said, um, when you go and you don't like it, you're not coming back in. <laughs> I said, okay. But when I got to Winston-Salem, I got here in the night. The next morning, when I looked around, I felt like I was home. There was something about this place that got to me and just held on to me. They didn't know anything about the history or the connection between the two, you know, this city and that of like you. I didn't have any, any idea. But the scenery was great to me. The uh, topography, the mannerism of, of the people. You know, when you come from Liberia where we are close like, together, and you come to New York where you bet you can say hi to somebody, you know, and they're looking at you crazy, you're in the train, you're like, you know, it's, it was not what I was accustomed to. And so when I came to Winston-Salem, the rest were history. And I'm here. And I love it. And I tell folks over and over, I would not leave Winston-Salem anymore to go anywhere else unless I moved to Liberia. This is where I know. And then you can see I'm a ram, right? So, I, <laughs> so hard to be one, right? <laughs> so that tells you a whole lot about it. But again, Later on, when I got to know some of the history, then I felt that, okay, it was a reason why I was stuck here. Because it looks like we have that kind of connection, that you know, thing that we can hold together with. And so it is just pleasing to know that I've been here and I've been raising. Those of you who just come to Winston-Salem, Winston-Salem has grown, okay? What you all see here today, Nothing. Winston Center had grown tremendously. Even the school, when I went to school here, I would tell this guy that the, uh, the bookstore was the little student union building right there. That was the bookstore. And we did everything in that place, and the student government building, nice closed down. This building was not here. No. So there were tremendous, I mean, tremendous amount of things. I saw the parking deck uh, coming in, and uh, you got, you know, we used to park with 25 cents. 
and get in. Now the trick was, the first person who put the quarter in would go bumper to bumper and get out. <laughs> <laughs> so it has grown downtown and everything has grown. And that have kept me here and I love it here. Oh wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so we're going to backtrack into history just a little bit more. So does anybody know how many slaves actually went back to Liberia um, from Winston-Salem? Uh, yeah, there were 17 um, slaves. Um, Schumann, Schumann had 17. Yes. And uh, then uh, I think two, about five or six more were. Um, about 23. 23. And uh, uh, whenever you say that, I always like to say the names of people. So you would indulge me for one moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Celia. Or she was. She would have been called Celia. Of course, we know that these are not the names. Celia, Flora, Flora Schumann Bloom, and these last names are going to be Moravian names. You know that when people were emancipated from um, enslaved people became free, they were given the name of the enslaver. So you're going to hear Moravian names. Um, William Bloom, Saboric Schober Bloom, Lucretia Karina Bloom, Augustus Bloom, Sarah Bloom. Lucretia Schumann Wooten, Julius Wooten, Nancy Karina Schumann Wooten, Joseph Wooten, Karina Wooten, uh, Salon Wooten, Casper Schumann, James Schumann, Clarissa Schumann, Montreal Bell Schumann, Doris Schumann, Willis Schumann, Susanna Schumann, Lydia Schumann, uh, Philip Holman and Nathan um, and then in 1839, Enoch Morgan Gottlieb Schober and Nancy Fanny Schober. And um, Enoch was the son of Timothy, the one who I said um, did not speak uh, English or did not speak anything outside of his mother tongue. When, um, when Schumann emancipated the enslaved people in 1837, Timothy was ill. And um, Enoch, nor his, um, the, his mother, Nancy, or Fanny, would leave. And in 1839, Timothy passed, and then Enoch and um, Fanny went on to London. Okay, awesome. So were they the first settlers to recolonize Liberia, this group of um, human slaves? Well, let's look at it now. It could be true, but if you can recall, um, we're talking about the 1830s here, and uh, Liberia actually uh, came around in the early 1820s uh, as a result of the American Colonization Society, uh, who had different motives, so to speak. Uh, first of all, some of them were operations. Okay. They wanted to free the slaves. And they did not want anything that connected with slavery. Another group felt that um, when these slaves do get free, we don't want them around here. You know, especially when you look at 1830 with the uh, uh, Nat Turner revolt, and it was also uh, orchestrated by some of the blacks. And they felt threatened, especially the, most of the, uh, the slave owners. That if we, if these guys actually get free, they might even still have more problem. And so Liberia was founded by the American Colonization Society for the repatriation of free slaves who wanted to return. They were not forced. Who wanted to return to the country of the ancestors? Now let's let's reverse a little bit that those who actually went to Liberia were not born in Liberia. They were all born here in the United States, in different parts, especially maybe down the South here. But they were, not, they were not actually born because their parents came here, their names were changed, 
the names they took back were not the name, and you know, they went back with these American and American names. And according to the history, now, some folks would tell you General 7, 1822, some would say February 1821, 1820, but it was in the early 1820s when the first group of free slaves, and I heard one of the questions asking if they were free. Yes, they were free. Free slaves left the soil on the Elizabeth to migrate to a country called Liberia. At that time, it was not even Liberia yet when the American Colonization Society went to Africa to locate a place for the repatriation of the free slaves. Uh, history tells us that they went to Sierra Leone, uh, another country next to us, and they their condition was not conducive. So they drifted further down and landed on what is now Providence Island, and there where they met some indigenous. And you know, it was like similar to the Lewis and Clark expedition. You go out and meet some people and you interact with them, and, and they explain to them why they have come to Africa and they were able to mingle with the local and they purchased this parcel of land that eventually became Liberia. Before then, it was the Green Coast, G-R-A-I-N, coast, because I think there were a lot of spice and stuff going on in that region and everything else. And later on, in the 18, Liberia did not get its name until 1824, okay? and. The American Colonization Society went through, by way of Congress, when President James Monroe was president. And he was able to convince Congress to provide the first $100,000 to allow the American Colonization Society to do what they intended to do. And so history tells us that it was in the first group that left from here, there were 80, some books say 86, some say 88 that went on the, uh, the Mayflower, I mean the Elizabeth, to what is now Liberia. And they settled, and in 1824 they named the country, and then to start going further, uh, naming the capital city, if you have recall, uh, to honor President James Monroe. The, pres the capital city of Monrovia, of Liberia, is Monrovia, meaning Monroe Village, Monroe Town, in, in, okay, in that context. And they decided to name the country Liberia, meaning freedom, a land of, for free people. And that led to uh, 18, 1840 something, when they actually uh, became independent.